This is a chase problem between a car and a truck. Not much of a chase, not very dramatic, but that's what we call this type of problem. We have a car that starts with a constant acceleration and it starts from rest. So for the car, I have that V naught for the car is zero. Its acceleration is 2.2 meters per second squared. For the truck, I have that it moves with a constant speed. So V for the truck is equal to 9.5 meters per second. And that's a summary of all the information I've got. For both of them, they start from the same point, the stoplight at time zero. So I'm going to let X naught equals zero for both because they start from the same place. Now this is one, it's nice to look at a graph of the motion here. Uh, if I have an X versus T curve here, the truck goes at constant velocity the whole time. So the slope of its graph is a straight line. The car starts from rest, so it has a horizontal curve to begin with, but it accelerates, so it's curve, it's a curve, and that's what the car does. It's actually a parabola, is what it is. And when the two curves cross, or where the two curves cross, is where the car catches the truck. Now let's move on and take a look at the equations of motion here for the two of them. Let's see, how far beyond the starting point will the car pass the truck? It takes a few steps to get this. I start off with the car equation of motion, the x versus t curve. And I have x for the car is going to have, remember I said x naught was 0 and v naught was 0 for the car? Usually this equation would look like x naught plus v naught for the car times t plus one half the acceleration of the car times t squared but here this is zero this is zero and all i have is one half the acceleration of the car times t squared for the truck it's just going at constant velocity its most general equation under that circumstance might be x naught for the truck plus v for the truck times t, but started from zero as well. So this is just v for the truck times t. That's x for the car is this thing. x for the truck is this. The car catches the truck when these two things are equal. So I can say that one half the acceleration of the car times t squared equals the velocity of the truck times t. If I bring this across, I can say one half the acceleration of the car times t squared minus the velocity of the truck times t is equal to zero. To solve this in an algebra class, you would factor this. We can factor it here t times one half the acceleration of the car times t minus the velocity of the truck is equal to zero. When you have two things multiplied together equaling zero, either this one's zero, t equals zero, or this one's zero, And if I solve this for the velocity, or for t, excuse me, I would get t equals two times the velocity of the truck over the acceleration of the car. That's about uh, three algebra steps at one time there. But uh, the solution to that happens to be 8.6 seconds. 
at least the two significant figures. And I'm using the information back here where I have the velocity of the truck and the acceleration of the car. Now, I want to know how far beyond the starting point will the car pass the truck? Well, the easy equation here is that the position of the truck is equal to the velocity of the truck times t. I could also have used the uh, equation of motion for the car. Actually, it isn't any harder. But I'd have the uh, 9.5 meters per second that the truck is going at times the 8.6 seconds that it takes for the car to catch the truck. And I get a distance of about 82 meters. By the way, the other way to do that would have just been to use the position of the car. One half the acceleration of the car times t squared. And I think you'd find that if you plugged in the acceleration of the car and the 8.6 seconds squared here, you'd get the same value there. Possibly a little differing in the last significant figure. So that's how far it takes for the car to catch the truck. The last question is, how fast will the car be traveling at this point? Well, let's see. We haven't written this down yet, but in general, when you have constant acceleration, the velocity of the car would be v naught for the car plus acceleration of the car times t. This looks pretty much like our most general equation, except I've got these little c's on here because it's the velocity of the car. Now, the car started from rest, so that's zero. So this is just the velocity of the car is the acceleration of the car times t. Acceleration of the car was that 2.2 meters per second squared. The time to catch the truck was the 8.6 seconds. So velocity of the car is just going to be the product of those two. 8.6 seconds, whoops, well, multiplication is commutative. I can write it in either order. 2.2 meters per second squared. And if I multiply those two things together, I get 19.0 meters per second. It happens to be twice the velocity of the truck. And that's actually not an accident when you have a chase problem like this. It kind of works out that way. Um, I usually try not to make the ones on tests quite so obvious. But anyway, that's how fast the car is traveling at that point. By the way, we should have just two significant figures on that 19 meters per second.